What just happened with 3i Atlas that has NASA astronomers scrambling to explain? How is it possible that an interstellar object executed a navigational maneuver so precise that the odds of it happening naturally are 1 in 4 billion? What are we really looking at here? Because this is not just another comet passing through our solar system. This visitor arrived with a trajectory that threaded through Jupiter's gravitational field, like a spacecraft performing a perfect slingshot maneuver. And here is the part that will keep you awake tonight. In less than 24 hours, this mysterious object reaches its closest approach to Earth. The 15th anomaly researchers have identified is physically impossible according to everything we know about comets and asteroids. Scientists are calling this behavior unexplainable, and the mainstream media is barely covering what could be the most significant interstellar encounter in human history. Stick around because what happened next will blow your mind. Now, before we dive into the gravitational mathematics and the bizarre behavior that defies physics, if you want to stay ahead of breaking discoveries about 3i Atlas as new data floods in over the next 48 hours, hit that subscribe button right now and turn on notifications. We're going to be tracking this live, and trust me, you do not want to miss what is coming. Let me ask you something. When a massive object enters our solar system from interstellar space, what should happen? It should face a gauntlet. It falls into the deep gravitational wells of the Sun and the giant planets, particularly Jupiter. And normally, this is a chaotic, violent, random process. A rogue asteroid or cometary fragment will typically do one of two things. It will either crash into the star, consumed by the very gravity that drew it in, or it will be ejected chaotically, flung out on a random vector that pays no attention to the delicate plane of our planetary system. But here is where 3i Atlas breaks every rule in the book. This visitor did neither of those things. Instead, it executed what can only be described as a precise gravitational slingshot. It did not just fall through our solar system. It threaded the needle. Think about that for a moment. It dove deep into the inner solar system, passing inside the orbit of Mars, using the sun's gravity to gain immense speed. But the crucial detail that most initial reports completely glossed over is its interaction with Jupiter. The object maneuvered along the very boundary of Jupiter's Hill sphere. For those unfamiliar with orbital dynamics, the Hill Sphere is the region around a planet where its gravity dominates over the Sun. To skirt the edge of this sphere is to walk a gravitational tightrope. Pass too close and you are captured or crashed. Pass too far and you fail to gain the necessary assist to align your path. 3i Atlas passed on a knife's edge. This near miss was not a clumsy brush with a gas giant. It was a maneuver that avoided capture while keeping the object on a narrowly defined trajectory. It effectively used Jupiter as a fulcrum to pivot its path. And the result? It entered the inner solar system on a path closely aligned with the ecliptic plane, the flat disk where Earth and all the other planets orbit. Now here is where the numbers get truly staggering. The probability of a random interstellar object entering the solar system on a path so closely aligned with the ecliptic is calculated at only 0.2%. That is two-tenths of 1%. Let that sink in. If you were throwing a dart at a dartboard from a mile away, and you not only hit the bullseye, but hit the exact center of the pin holding the bullseye in place, you might begin to understand the precision we are witnessing here. But wait, later in this video, I'm going to reveal the 15th anomaly that researchers just identified, and it is going to completely change how you think about what this object actually is. The implications are enormous, and by the end of this discussion, you will understand why some astronomers are losing sleep over this. Unlike a random asteroid which would approach from any angle, from above or below the solar system, this object slid in sideways, perfectly matching the traffic flow of our planets.
It demonstrates a trajectory far more precise than expected from natural gravitational interactions alone. So what does this actually mean? It means we have to ask a very difficult question. Is this precision the result of a one in a million cosmic lottery win? Or is it evidence of something else entirely? When we see a spacecraft from Earth perform a gravity assist, like the Voyager probes or Cassini, we know it requires thousands of hours of calculation and precise thruster burns to hit that keyhole in space. 3. I Atlas hit a similar keyhole. It utilized the gravitational landscape of our solar system with an efficiency that mimics intelligent navigation. This brings us to a concept called the gravitational needle. The object's path suggests it was not just falling, it was aiming. The energy required to correct a trajectory after entering the solar system is immense. But if you line up your approach vector perfectly while you are still light years away, you can use the gravity of the stars and planets you pass to do the work for you. This is known as ballistic capture or low energy transfer. But here is the thing that should make you pause. It requires knowledge of the system you are entering. A rock does not know where Jupiter is. A rock does not know the mass of the sun. A rock simply obeys gravity. 3i Atlas obeyed gravity, but it did so in a way that maximized its stability and alignment with Earth. Now, if the trajectory was the only oddity, we might be able to write it off as a freakish roll of the cosmic dice. We might say, well, the universe is big and strange things happen, but the trajectory is merely the delivery system. The package itself, the comet, the object, whatever it is, is behaving in ways that defy the physics of ice and rock. And this is where things get truly bizarre. Let me reveal the 15th anomaly that has researchers completely baffled. Comets rotate. Asteroids rotate. This is basic mechanics. Nothing in space sits perfectly still. When a natural comet rotates, its surface is exposed to the sun in a cycle. Day, night, day, night. As the sunlit side heats up, ice is sublime, creating jets of gas and dust. When that side rotates into darkness, the jets usually die down or sputter out as the temperature drops. It is a chaotic rhythmic process, like a sprinkler spinning in a garden. 3. I Atlas is not behaving like a sprinkler. It is behaving like a spotlight. Observations reveal that while the object itself is rotating, its active jet remains pointed toward the sun with an accuracy of 8 degrees. Think about that. Imagine a spinning top. Now imagine painting a dot on one side of that top. As the top spins, the dot should point at you, then away, then at you, then away. But with 3 eye Atlas, it is as if the dot, the jet, is sliding across the surface of the object in real time to compensate for the rotation, keeping itself locked on the sun. Or alternatively, the internal mechanism driving the jet is selectively activating only the specific vents that are currently facing the star switching them on and off with computerized precision as the object spins. This is the 15th anomaly. The jets are active only when facing the sun, even though the bases of these jets must at times be on the night side. For a natural object, this is physically counterintuitive. If a vent rotates to the night side, it should cool down. If it rotates back to the day side, it takes time to heat up again. There is a thermal lag. 3i Atlas shows no such lag. It maintains a continuous high pressure stream directed at the sun regardless of its rotational phase. Such behavior implies sophisticated insulation or internal control that is extremely difficult to reconcile with a natural comet. It suggests that the interior of the object is not a solid block of ice, but a structure capable of managing heat flow or directing output. But the anomaly gets even deeper. We have to look at what happened after perihelion, the point of closest approach to the sun. Before perihelion, the object had one active jet facing the sun. As it swung around the star, the geometry changed. The side that was facing the sun began to turn away. 
In a natural scenario, the jet should have pointed away, or the comet should have tumbled. Instead, a second jet on the opposite side of the object activated, and just like the first one, this new jet locked onto the sun again with that same 8-degree precision. So what does this actually mean? It means the object effectively switched engines. It turned off the forward thruster and turned on the rear thruster, or vice versa, depending on the orientation, to maintain a constant relationship with the solar wind. The probability that a natural object would orient its poles toward the sun twice in a row, once inbound and once outbound, is roughly 1 in 40,000. I want to pause here and ask you a question, because this is the part that keeps astronomers up at night. If you saw a drone spinning in the air, but its camera stayed perfectly locked on you the entire time, would you assume the wind was blowing it that way? Or would you assume it was tracking you? As let me know in the comments below. Do you think a 1 in 40,000 chance is just a coincidence? Or is this evidence of a mechanism we do not understand? This sunward lock is not just a curiosity. It is a smoking gun for internal complexity. The rotation axis of 3I Atlas was aligned within 8 degrees of the sun during July through August of 2025. This alignment implies that the base of the new anti-tail jet, the one that turned on after perihelion, was sitting in total darkness on the night side for months before it activated. And the base of the old jet, the one active before perihelion, rotated into the night side and immediately shut down. For these jets to be active only when facing the sun, they must be well insulated on the night side. If they were not insulated, the heat would bleed through the object and you would get outgassing from all sides, creating a messy, diffuse cloud. We do not see a cloud, we see a beam. This requires a thermal barrier that prevents the sun's heat from soaking into the core of the object keeping the volatile materials frozen until the exact millisecond they are needed. Nature rarely insulates this well. Nature tends toward equilibrium. 3I Atlas is fighting equilibrium. Now you might be thinking, okay, the trajectory is strange, the rotation is bizarre, but surely the chemical composition is normal, right? Wrong. They could act as directed shields against sunlight and solar wind. If you are a technological probe filled with sensitive electronics or biological samples, you do not want to be cooked by the sun at perihelion. You might fire a dense stream of gas toward the star to create a plasma bow shock, a physical umbrella that deflects the radiation. Now let us put it all together. When you stack these probabilities, the 0.2%, the 1 in 40,000, the 0.000025, you reach a number that is no longer statistical noise. You reach a verdict. The net probability is approximately 1 in 4 billion. 1 in 4 billion. If you bought a lottery ticket every day for 10 million years, you might hit these odds once. And this calculation does not even include the additional anomalies we have not fully explored today such as the disproportionately high nickel content detected in the spectral analysis. The composition resembles industrial alloys, stainless steel, or inconel, more than it resembles the silicate dust of a typical asteroid. These anomalies raise fundamental questions. What is 3I Atlas? Is it a derelict probe, a functioning surveyor, a piece of interstellar debris from a destroyed civilization? And perhaps more disturbingly, why is there so little curiosity from mainstream sources regarding its nature? The silence is deafening, but the data speaks for itself. For those of you who want to see this history-making object with your own eyes, the window is closing fast. The comet will reach its closest approach on December 19th at 0602 Coordinated Universal Time. In Europe, Observers in London can see it at 0602 Greenwich Mean Time. In Paris, Berlin, and Rome, the time is 0702 Central European Time. In the United States, the encounter happens in the early hours or late evening of December 18th. 
New York sees it at 0102 Eastern Standard Time, Chicago at midnight. And for the West Coast, Los Angeles, your best viewing time is 2202 Pacific Standard Time on December 18th. It is located in the constellation Leo, positioned just below the bright star Regulus. However, do not expect to see a blazing streak across the sky with your naked eye. At magnitude plus 12, it is faint. Observing requires a telescope of at least 8 inches or 200 millimeter aperture. If you have a backyard telescope, now is the time to dust it off. For those without equipment, do not worry. The Virtual Telescope Project will provide live coverage starting at 0400 Coordinated Universal Time, which is 2300 Eastern Standard Time on the 18th. I highly recommend tuning in. Seeing this object live, knowing what we now know about its impossible nature is a profound experience. 3i Atlas is not just another comet. It is a historic interstellar visitor demanding close observation. It has challenged our models, defied our statistics, and perhaps, just perhaps, given us our first glimpse of technology that is not our own. If you found this deep dive valuable, smash that like button. It helps this scientific content reach more people who are asking the same questions we are. And do not forget to subscribe for updates as we analyze the post-flyby data. The story of 3i Atlas is far from over. But do not stop here. The universe is full of secrets waiting to be uncovered. Click on the next video and join us as we explore even more astonishing mysteries from the farthest reaches of space. I promise you, what we are discovering out there will leave you speechless.